Welcome back to another episode of Lip Lada. So everyone, we are here back in our awesome campaign of awesomeness where I have declared war on Lip Plata and I'm basically getting as many people as I can into this war. Not because we really do need to like get that many people in this war, but just because Having as many people as in this war will end the war quicker and will make it much easier for me to go conquer and yeah. Anyways, while this is also happening, I think what I'm going to be doing is building up a uh, some new armies. One thing I'm going to be noting is building up the rest of my uh, final little new Argentinian army led by Avasto Meza. Yes, Avasto Evervastio Mezia. 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 Meza. <sighs> I hate Spanish names. <laughs> Anyways, so let's continue on. As as Venezuela totally, slowly tries to stop fighting against me, they are trying to siege up provinces and thinking that they could actually win this. It's kind of cute. It's it's kind of cute. I won't deny that they definitely do seem very motivated to try to kill me. But you know. I have America on my side, and America's being all... Oh, Puerto Rico. You better hope America doesn't snatch you in this. Seriously. Oh, you're, you're in the spheres of America. Oh, my goodness. Well, at least you're striking back against your sphere leader. That's something good. At least. At least. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, oh and then America just comes in and was like, Yep, yeah, this is America. Yep. Yeah, manifest destiny. So totally true. We're protecting everyone, everyone. Yes, this is totally how you protect everyone. Uh, so much political commentary right there that I could make, but I'm not going to. So, anyways, let's continue on with our game of... Of Hunt the Rebels, everyone. Hunt the Blasted Rebels. You guys are on Rebel con Hunting Control. You guys are on Rebel Hunting Control. Everyone is on Rebel Hunting Control, because Rebels are annoying as heck to deal with. Seriously, if there was an award for annoying rebels, they would probably win the award definitely. Uh, and over here, please tell me you guys can win this, Peru. For heaven's sakes, they're not that difficult. Oh my goodness, Peru, really? Really? You guys are gonna lose? Oh my goodness. Call the summit. A summit of equals. The time has come for the great Democrat. Uh, call for the summit. Yes, yeah, sure. Platine summon of Nacho Leaks at the summit. Uh, 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 Ay, yay! We just got an alliance with Italy. Wow. Sweet. Yeah, we got an alliance with Italy, and I got Krakow influence. I don't really care about Krakow, but yeah. Yeah, let's become unneutral. And oh my goodness, the Soviet Union has formed everyone. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Wow, it's, it's a little bit ahead of schedule, too. So, yeah, and Yugos, uh, I've already pointed out Yugoslavia formed from a couple episodes ago. They might actually be a good place to actually start influencing. If no one else is, yeah, no one else is working on these guys. Let's also start working on them. Let's work on the Philippines. You guys are already happily invested in me. No, I don't really care about Krakow. Why would I ever invest my time into Krakow? Okay, Yugoslavia, though, could be actually a good investment because it actually has a decent amount of industry prestige, and military. We could actually start putting a good grasp over here for when if we ever want to do a European invasion. Also, oh my goodness. Italy, did you just go to war with France? With not the Germans on your side? Oh my goodness, you guys are about to get so pwned. Ah, uh, okay. So besides my uh, new ally of the Italians now fully recognizing, you know, that we are a great and powerful nation. We also have apparently the Italians being stupid and fighting the French when they really shouldn't. I mean, you don't fight the French around this time. That is not the time to fight the French. <laughs> Definitely not the time to fight the French, especially when they're not occupied with any other uh, problems. So, yeah. They're probably gonna lose that war. I mean, if they, if they pull out a victory, I'll be really shocked. I'll be really in shock. But as you guys can always see, the French death stacks are already starting to crush through them. And, yeah, it'll be only a matter of time. Only a matter of time before they're all gone. And over here, while we are slowly sieging up all the land, I'm going to go conquer the actual capital. 
once the actual capital is underneath our control. And apparently, oh, it seems like the Peru and the Colombian army just defeated the Venezuelan army. Huh. That's a good job, vassals. Good job. And so, but with us, though, we are just kind of chilling out over here, conquering the rest of this. Sign the Geneva Convention. Again, I'm not particularly keen on signing the Geneva Convention. I really don't want to. Um, but, you know, holy moly, am I getting a ton of immigrants. <laughs> holy moly. I mean, usually I have, like, birth rate maybe a little bit lower, but oh my goodness, like, I kind of want to see how many people are coming to our country. Uh, oh my yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> 10,000 immigrants are coming to our country. Even some from America. Where's America getting? Only 2,000. Only one. We are... Okay. We are outproducing these two by 2%. By like 200 times. They have combined. Oh my goodness. We are like immigrant capital of the world. I mean, America? Move over. You have your Statue of Liberty? Yeah, well, we have the... Oh... Um, we have ports, <laughs> but we have Burl Rios, that's what I meant to say. We actually have Burl Rios, one of our best places to ever get immigrants. I mean, seriously, we're growing like heck when we have all these people. And let's see, um, any other factories we can, we can open up this one a little bit bigger, this one a little bit bigger, this one a little bit bigger, this one a little bit bigger. We want to open up the ones that are already doing really, really good as it is and just keep, you know, producing those. Yeah, economically, this is, we have pretty strong, we have pretty strong factories, I believe. We now at least have an economy that's actually semi-working, at least. I'm glad about that. Because seriously, for a while there, we just had an economy that was like, Ah, my goodness, what are you doing, liberals? No, no, do not unsubsidize everything, no, don't build this factory here, no. Oh my goodness, the horror, man, the horror. Uh, I won't build anything over here because I think that's just going to grow by itself. And let's get back to the game. So, yeah. There'll be... I don't think Venezuela is going to hold out much longer. They're going to end the war very, very, very soon. I, I, they're very... Holy moly. Oh, oh, what was it? I thought that was a great war on my part. I was like, wait, what did I do? I, I, I know I went to war with Venezuela, but that was a, a time to go to a great war. But anyways... We actually have a great... This is actually a great war. Wow. So, the great war... Okay, I have to actually see the... I like to visually see the sides. I don't like to just look at it in the chat bar. But, so the sides are the French and the Germans on the same side. Okay, versus the Italians, Belgians, and the Soviet Union. Oh, wow. And then we have the British, of course, who actually do have military access all the way up to the Soviet Union land. And, of course, we also have Scandinavia, who's also an ally. Uh, yeah, this is... Wow. Uh, you can't expect a better war than this. I mean, literally, I mean, it's the Germans, the 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 French, and everyone else. Wow. Huh. I'm kind of glad the Netherlands didn't get involved, because that means this land would have been ripped up. But this is kind of bad, because now the French are going to become the new, like, world order leaders over here, and basically destroy all the British Africa. Uh, Germany will probably take all of this over here, and maybe some of South Africa, but this is... This is kind of scary. <laughs> I'm not even going to deny, we might have a major colonial shift, which may or may not end us, people. It Depending on if who we ally with ourselves with. Uh by the way, you about done. You about done, Venezuela. I'm, 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 I'm almost thinking you guys are done. Uh, the whip cracks out of love. <laughs> so everyone, remember what? Remember what? That's the lessons you learn from paradox. A, when a com when you see a comet, your people will immediately freak out and they'll think it's some kind of worship from the devil. And two, if the whip, if you hear a whip, that usually means it's the, it means it's a sign of love. So whenever you guys are in your own like. You know, when you hang out with your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, you know, whatever your preference of gender is, just remember, the whip is love, okay? Okay. Now, continuing on from this, we're going to be sieging up the last little bits of this place. Yugoslavia is now becoming... I'm hoping to increase my relationship with Yugoslavia, establish my own kind of progress in here. Wow, that is just an OP alliance right there. 
And I believe it happened. Yes, it happened, everyone. So Venezuela has been officially integrated into the Le Platin system. So now we officially own all of this. And we are 20 times bigger than Brazil is now. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, we're going to move our army over here. Let's see, is there any two armies? No. Um, never actually built that cannon, that's why. I was like, why don't I have this all built? Oh, we never actually built that cannon. Okay, and before I do anything, um, I'm going to see how the economy is. Uh, yeah, we have to wait till like, unwar subsidy stuff happens. And now we have basically every other place over here underneath our control, which gives us major power against everyone. And we could probably, probably go to war with Brazil freely, and, oh my goodness, Italy, you guys are so going to be destroyed. Oh, man. So is the Soviet Union, but they're lesser, they're lesser threat in this game than in our timeline, so... We should outfix the expedition across Antarctica! And this was the one I was actually thinking of, the one we should actually expedite an expedition and make really small idea, because we literally... Antarctica is literally, like, right over there. Like, if, if they had the map correctly aligned, the thing would be right over here, so we should definitely be the country to discover it first. Also, how is our building of, um... Ports. Okay, we can upgrade our ports again? Okay. I'll see you guys in... Well, actually, we can keep it going while I, uh... While I uh, upgrade all of our ports. Let's see, and let's just get energy generating works. Let's see, and get our naval... Foci? No, not foci. Naval lessons. Yes. Get all this, get all this. Let's see. No, it doesn't seem like... Hmm. Seems like we're still upgrading, it's just... Hmm. Alright, seems like, yeah, seems like we're still upgrading. Okay. Also, our people are surprisingly literate in our country. I mean, considering we have 10 million... Wow, holy shoot, we have 10 million. How much are... How, we must be really close to America's size. Okay, 13 million. Okay, by the time this game ends, we will probably have overlapped America in terms of population. And that's even if I disinclude all my other little vassals over here. Speaking of which... Because, hmm, because I'm such a nice guy, and because I don't really want to deal with, uh, issues, let's release Nigeria. Now, a lot of people are like thinking, wait, what? You're releasing Nigeria? Yes, I am. Well, actually, let's do it a little bit later. That was, that was actually going to be one of my big reveals for the later of the series. But yes, I'm actually going to free most of my colonial lands, because honestly... What use do I have for them at the end of the game? And what use do I have for them at, like, you know, halfway mark? And plus, it's going to be nice to see another little, like, African nation over here. Besides just Libya or Liberia. Liberia and Egypt. Besides Antonis, of course. I don't forget the mighty Tunisian Empire who somehow survived all the way until 1809. Yeah, that actually does deserve a hand right there. Because usually, <laughs> that's really hard to do as Tunis. Okay, so let's see, who's costing me the most? Uh, two of furniture, and Babu, Paraguay, it's costing me a little bit too much. Furniture, luxurious, da, 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 da. the rest of them, are, I could do, the rest of them are kind of fine. I don't really care if they, like, you know, do stuff. But what I do need to do is actually, like, increase taxes just a little bit then. I'm going to keep all these subsidies going, which I am. And all my social well. Oh my goodness, social spending is so high in my country. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to keep both of those luxuries. You guys have to be taxed a lot. Because social spending and all these other luxuries you guys get in my country, which I didn't expect myself to actually give you, cost me a lot of money. So, yeah. Let's get that, let's get that worked out very quickly, okay? It's going to cost me a lot of money to do all that kind of stuff. And over here... By the way, we do have 2% still in terms of clergymen. Oh, no, we do not. Ooh, we're not getting exa exactly the same amount of benefits. But, yeah, considering we don't... Since we're already, like, taking down almost all the texts, and there's not really much else we can really do about... Well, there's not really much more text we can really take down. It's not too big of an issue. Strip mining and burial wheels. Yes! More money. More money. Our athletes are victorious! Glory to the youth of our nation! Because the children, everyone, we must always think about the children. Okay? 
Wow, that red blob actually kind of scares me just a little bit. <laughs> I, I know they're not physically, I mean, I know they're not like, you know, militaristically as powerful as what they would be in our timeline, but still, does it not, is it just me or do you, does in any kind of game, guys, you just see the word Soviet Union and you're just like, oh no, that mean, they mean business. <laughs> they mean business. Oh my goodness, and look at that. They're all being occupied by Germany. Germany's having a pretty good blitzkrieg, I can see that. They made it all the way up to... Hmm. Uh, they already made it... They seem to have randomly seized up one little province over here. That's kind of weird. Trevere. And where's the capital? Is the capital still St. Saint, Saint Petersburg? No, they must have moved the capital to Moscow. Uh, there's Moscow. Yeah, they moved it to Moscow. So there's Moscow. So, comparatively... Well, if we were really counting this, Germany already made it to Russia. Because they literally right there. <laughs> But I think the real line of battles like right about here, so they really are about six provinces away from Moscow. Wow, that's pretty good. Also, I can apparently do a new social reform. So let's see, what does everyone want right now? Uh, fourteen-hour workdays. Uh, sure. I mean, is there anything else you guys might not want? Okay, fourteen-hour workdays. Yeah, sure. You guys can work less hours. You actually have a set limit now. Assimilation must continue. And yes, I'm actually going to make it so that people actually do have a set amount of hours you actually have to work them. I'm no longer going to be the slave driver as I used to be and make it so that you have you could just work as unlimited amount of hours. And it seems like the f the uh, Italians are going to try to fight me for this. Um, Yeah, I don't think they're going to be ma maintaining being a great power for very long. I mean, after this war, I'm pretty sure they're going to drop. Yeah, they're already 12th. So, we'll basically be able to conquer Yugoslavia because it'll be our region. And then we might be able to conquer some more of the Baltics, actually. That'd be really nice to, like, you know, Diplo and... Well, not Diplo Annex. Diplo conquer the rest of those regions. Okay. Okay, that's really good. And let's see. Back over here in La Plata land, I'd love to be building up more military units. We're finally building up that one unit, which is good. So that means we can finally start building up. As soon as that one cannon comes out, we can move this army down and then start building up a new army that then will replace the old army. And that'll make everything really happy. Oh man, our immigration went down. Dang it. Although, because we're not in the Great War right now, this is like becoming such a great opportunity for like immigrants. Uh, I, I kind of want to see it again. How much are we still integrating to our country? 5,000. Yeah, it seems like we just got a half of what we did. It was still about more two times than both these two combined, but still, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Speaking of which, where do they even Im in uh, into that? immigrate? Like, where exactly is, like, the big immigration spot for my country? Like, where does everyone go to, like, immigrate? Let's see. Uh, it seems like a lot of people like to go to here. And... A lot of these places over here are definitely immigrant friendly. We are also now friendly with Yugoslavia. Wait, wait for it everyone. Wait for it. Uh, there we go. We are now cordial with Yugoslavia, who is also apparently a communist nation. Yep. Uh, I mean, I guess I can't judge. We were a communist nation there for a while too. Wow. Okay, so there is apparently some big fighting over here going on. It's the fact that the Soviet Union has not been completely overrun by the Germanic army. I mean, don't get don't get me wrong. The Soviet Union does have a good army. They they could basically uh, they could basically keep pace with the Germans. But I would have thought by now they would have been defeated and like sieged up all the way. It must be. I'm guaranteeing it. The UK must be sending in all their army from like from like British India to go help out in the sieges over here. This is the only way I could see like this battle actually turning the way it is. Uh, state fascist? Uh, prevent or Yeah, I, I really don't want to be... I definitely don't want... I don't really want to become a Soviet Union nation in this game. Uh, lose? No, I don't want to do that. But I definitely... I, I don't want to become a Soviet, and I didn't want to become fascist in this game. And I please don't make me become fascist, okay? Oh, by the way, how are we doing in the fascist part? Okay, fascist is only 6.1% of my country. And in terms of electoral votes, they are even close to trying to topple all the major, like, electoral places. 
Good. Okay, good. My people are not going to make me become a fascist nation. Or well, a fascist dictatorship. I mean, yes. Thank goodness. All right, supply limit-wise, probably should be sitting right there. Because that's a much nicer area to be sitting. And we should try again. I mean, I, I don't know how we're not discovering the center of the divert. Uh, yeah. E e might as well do that because I get some benefits out of that. It's kind of bad, but might as well get some benefits. But how do we not discover it? I mean, how did we not discover it? I'm kind of mad about that. What did our explorers do? Did they just, like, take the wrong turn and go to, like, China? I mean, how did we not discover the center of uh, Antarctica? That's, like, it's right there. It's right there. I mean, seriously. Oh, my goodness. Okay. On a side note, um, Ecuador might have a revolt, which may kick them out of our sphere, which may give us really bad, you know, trouble with them. But, you know, if they honestly lose the battle for this, that won't be maddening for me, because then what I could just do is go have them become my puppet, and then go casually make them a part of my empire too. Officially, I should say. And uh, Germany wants access to my lands. Uh, Germany, I don't see what I could do to you that would really be beneficial, like... My land is in absolutely nowhere near yours. <laughs> uh, but I ex wow, they are the Soviets are really pushing. Wow, they're really pushing back. I mean, it's not even Russia. It's not even Russian winter too. Huh? Oh wait, there, there we go. I wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, the Germans, man. I mean, the Russians, man. These guys just do not give up. Uh, give them give them props right there. They are just they're slowly starting to push back both the Germans and everyone. Oh wow, they need to get some of these little tiny places over here, which they are doing, may I add. Oh, and then the the Scandinavians are about to get destroyed. Oh my goodness. But the, the Scandinavians are gone, we won't have any paradox games. We can't you know we can't allow it to happen, but we can't exactly interfere with this war. I don't I kind of wish we could get in on this war just so we could, like, maybe get some land out of it in the meantime, but I don't think we can. Oh my, wow, that is a really colorful flag for Belgium. I have never, I have never seen that flag before. That's, oh, they're fascists. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> so that's, I've never seen the fascist flag. I Some Belgian person in that country could probably tell me the historical significance of that flag, but... Yeah, I've never seen a fascist flag. And, wow, the Russians are really pushed. Okay, it seems like they are getting a little bit dumbed down over here, but... Yeah, they are... Oh, there we go. This... There we go. Now we have the German counter-offensive. But, this is still... Wow. Man, the Soviets... You guys just, like... I could give you guys props. You guys just came back from, like, a major loss. The 1910 World Trade Fair in Polo Rios! Yay! Hopefully we have the most money and that we will get all the prestige and honor from having the best trade fair in the world. Also, apparently British Africa has completely defeated, um, uh, West, Western, would that be what? No, that's still Eastern, that's still Eastern. Eastern Africa, but over here, down, down over here, French Congo has defeated South African British. Probably mostly because they had some German land over here, but still, this is like... You know, I thought this war was going to be totally one-sided because it's the French and the Germans, but this is actually a pretty, like, even war. Except now that the French are now not so tied down with the uh, Italians, this might completely turn against the, the Russians. I mean, they can maybe fight the Germans, maybe, but I don't believe they can fight the Germans and the French at the exact same time. Man, this is such a weird alliance. <laughs> I hate, this is like way too powerful of lights. And yeah, as we can always see, the Scandinavians are trying to push back. Soviets, I oh mean, I don't know where the Soviets stand right now. Um, actually, we could go actually check out the ledger and go check out who has the biggest armies right now. Let's go do that. Uh, political systems, right back. I know it's not that far. Complete industrial score. There we go. This one's the one I want. Brigades. The UK has the most brigades, followed by the Soviet Union. Wow, 400, about, so let's see, they have about 810 units, uh, roughly 870 units combined. 
the Germans have the Germans and the French have about 600 so actually the Germans and the French are actually a little bit outnumbered in this but you have to kind of think of it as that oh and that is me yay 81 brigades for the win and then you have to think that well the, the UK doesn't have all of its army all centralized so this is, this is a very interesting one. Now I'm really peaked about who's going to win it. So, but I want to thank you guys for watching. I gave you guys a little bit more this episode because last episode I kind of cut it a little bit short. So, you guys got a little special, a little bit more special time with me. I hope you guys all feel very special right now. Because this is very, this is a little bit more special time. So, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys in the future. Bye.